Page 15 is writing functions. Page 15 is writing functions. And then we're going to turn to page 15. Page 15, writing functions. All right, so if we think back to pre-algebra, we had these things called arithmetic sequences. Meaning, if I had uh, the pattern an arithmetic sequence, if I had the pattern uh, 2, 8, 14, 20, dot, 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 they would tell you, like, find the 100th number. Well, oh my gosh, we don't want to sit and do a hundred times this pattern. So we found the difference. What do you do every time? Right, because this is the first term, this is the second term, this is the third term, and this is the fourth term. So we add six every time. So if I was going to write a rule, my rule was the common difference times x. Well, what was my common difference in this problem? Six. So I would write six times x. And then I'd say plus the zero term. And the zero term is the one that goes right in front of the first term. So if I'm going here, I add six. From here to here, I add six. From here to here, I add six. If I'm going to the right, I add 6, but I don't want to go to the right, I want to go to the left. So instead of adding 6, what should I do? I'm going to subtract 6. So what's 2 minus 6? Negative 4. And that fits inside my pattern. So my rule was common difference, 6 times x plus the zero term. When x is zero, when it's the zero term, what number is it? Negative four. So the 100th number, instead of x, I'd put in 100. Six times 100 is minus four, 596. The 100th term, the 100th number is 596. We're going to use this rule, common difference times x plus the zero term, today in class. Except we're going to say y equals common difference times x plus the zero term. Common difference times x plus the zero term. And of course, because this is algebra, not pre-algebra, we're going to make it a little bit harder. You're going to have a table.
And here's our data. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find the common difference times x plus the zero term. However, there are two values now. Up here there was just one value, right? Down here there are now two values. So we have to find the change in y over the change in x. It's going to be a fraction because there are two values. In an arithmetic sequence, there's only one value, 2, 8, 14, 20. But in my table, there are two values, 1, comma, negative 2, 2, comma, negative 1, 3, comma, 0, 4, comma, 1. So we're going to find the change in y over the change in x. From negative 2 to negative 1, what do you do? plus 1. Let's check the rest to make sure it's all the same. Negative 1 to 0, what do you do? Plus 1. And from 0 to 1, what do you do? Plus 1. So the change in y is positive 1. Now let's find the change in x. From 1 to 2, what do you do? plus 1 from 2 to 3, plus 1 from 3 to 4, plus 1. So the change in x is plus 1. Can you now simplify that? What's 1 over 1? One? 1. So all we're doing is we're doing as a fraction. Change in y over change in x. And then you can simplify your fraction. Common difference, found it, times x, easy enough, plus the zero term. Now, for step number two, you're going to find the zero term, meaning what is the zero value. So when x equals zero, we're looking for y. What does y equal? When x is zero... What does y equal? And what we're going to do is basically extend the table. Now, on your homework tonight, you can just write on top of this. But since these are our notes, I'm going to copy this table again down here. So please copy it. I know, it's a pain. And leave a big space at the beginning. We leave a big space at the beginning because I have to get to x equals 0. And right now I have 1, 2, 3, 4. So I know I have to get a 0 in there somewhere. I have to count, continue the pattern until x is 0. And because I am an a intelligent person, right, I know that I'm not going to go to the right. Because as I go to the right, what happens to x? It gets bigger. And I want 0, so I need to go to the left to make x smaller. If I go to the left, what am I doing every step? Subtracting one. So I'm going to take one more step to the left. One minus one is zero. Perfect. It was easy. As I move to the left on the bottom in the y values, what am I doing? Subtracting one. One minus one is zero. Zero minus one is negative one. Negative one minus one is negative two. Negative two minus one is? negative 3. So when x equals 0, y equals negative 3. And now all I have to do is substitute into this formula. y equals 
common difference. What was my common difference? Positive 1, x, plus the zero term. What was my zero term? Negative 3. If you wrote that down on your paper, you would get the problem right. Is there another way you could write it? Instead of 1x, what could you put? Just x. And instead of plus negative 3, what could you write? Minus 3. That's the more streamlined version, but this still works. All right, let's practice. Try this relation. Here's your relation, put it in a table. It's easier to see your data if it's in a table. So I'm going to put x, y, and I'm going to leave a space at the beginning because I know that I'm probably going to have to find a zero term. 1, 3, 2, 6, 3, 9, 4, 12. The first thing I do is find the common difference. The change in y over the change in x. Ladies and gentlemen, it has to be y over x. From 3 to 6, what do you do? Plus 3. 6 to 9, plus 3. 9 to 12 plus 3, it stayed the same. I heard somebody say times 2 down here, right? That works, but then does times 2 work for the next one? No, it's usually plus for arithmetic sequences. All right, what do we do on the x values from 1 to 2? Plus 1 from 2 to 3 and from 3 to 4? 3 over 1. Can you simplify that? Yes. Just, just 3. Number 2, when x equals 0, what does y equal? Alright, I have to get to 0 on the x value. So 3 or 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. 12, 9, 6, 3. What am I doing on the bottom? Minus 3. So 3 minus 3 is 0. And now let's substitute. Y equals common difference. What is it? Times X plus what's the 0 term? Zero. If you wrote that down, you'd get it right. Is there a better, more pretty algebraic way to write it? Y equals 3x. You don't need that plus zero. You can put it and it's fine. Are there questions on this? If you remember the rule, common difference times x plus the zero term. The common difference is change in y over change in x. And the zero term is when x is zero, what does y equal? Use your notes. Let's talk three vocabulary words. The first vocabulary word is an independent variable. Vocabulary word number one, independent variable.
independent variable. Independent variable is the input. It's what we start with. It's the top number. It's what's being done. It's the x value. The input, the x value, the independent variable, is the thing that we cannot change. One of the most common independent variables, right, it goes on the bottom of your graph, is time. No matter how hard you try, you cannot change time. One minute is one minute, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing. Independent variables do not change. They are constants. Then there's a dependent variable. Dependent variable is what we're measuring. It's the change. If the independent variable is the input, the dependent variable is the output. If the independent variable is the x value, the dependent variable is the y value. If I'm graphing how long I study and the grade I get, I can't change time. I can study 15 minutes, but 15 minutes at my house is the same thing as 15 minutes at your house. Or 30 minutes. Or 60 minutes. The time doesn't change, so it's on the bottom. Now, how much time I spend affects changes my grade. The dependent, the thing I'm trying to change is the y value, my grade. Yes, I understand there's a difference between 15 minutes and 30 minutes, but I can't manipulate, I can't make time go faster. I can, I do have control over my grade, my dependent variable. And the last one is called function notation. And for some reason, function notation scares us. Underneath function notation, I want you to write this. This is function notation. And for some reason that's terrifying to us because maybe there's like three variables in it. Function notation, all you do is you replace y with f of x. Instead of y, the variable y, we just put f of x, meaning the function of x. This is it. How did we used to write this? Yeah, we used to write y equals 3x minus 10. Is this scary? No. But somehow this freaks us out. You see it and you're like, ah! I have no idea what to do. What happened? That's a y. y equals... On your homework tonight, you're going to say something like it's going to say, uh, find the f of x if x equals 2. Don't panic. All that means is substitute. It's just like if y equals 3x minus 10, we would do y equals 3 times 2 minus 10.
So y equals, what's 3 times 2? 6 minus 10, negative 4. You can do it over here. So that means you can do it over here. Instead of f of x equals 3x minus 10, instead of x, what number are you going to put in? 2. Trey? Because it's just function notation. It's another way of looking at it. Because when we get into this, when you get into algebra 2, you're going to do functions inside of functions, so you can't have the letter y. You have to have it written like this. So this means the function of 2, what happens when you put 2 in for x? 6 minus 10, you get negative 4. It just means find the answer. Now, as if this wasn't confusing enough, you may also see f of x, or you may see g of x. They're the same thing. Don't get scared. It's just another way.